Oh, hey guys, my name is Dan. I'm here with my brother Michael, and this is Bromology, the study of biblical food. And normally there's a beat that pop, that kind of pops in right there, but we're going to see if we can add that later on. So this is the first time we've tried to add any kind of video element. We wanted to put a face to the voice. So I'm Dan. When you hear this crazy voice talking and saying too many words, you now know who I am. Uh, and this is my brother, Michael. And we want to take just a moment. We're here celebrating Bromology's first birthday. So March 2024 makes one year into the podcast. We talked about it on the last episode that we did 13 episodes in 2023, which is a huge win for us. Uh, Michael, how you doing, man? Doing amazing, man. Yeah, this was uh, just an awesome year. And we want, like you said, we want to put a face to the name and you know, it kind of expand more, you know, we're, we're mainly podcast focused, but now we're, you know, now we're YouTube official here with the face. So. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, you know, again, this is not an official podcast room, right? I'm here in my home office. I'm holding a microphone in my hand. Uh, but just for what it's worth, guys, if you've been wanting to launch a podcast, you're wondering about audio, you think our audio sounds good. This is just a hundred dollar microphone. It's a Shure SM58, I think it's called. Uh, it's a dynamic mic. You can plug it into an interface and you're off and running. Uh, I generally do some post editing stuff after to make our voices sound a little bit better. Uh, as you can see, Michael's just got a basic headset on right now. Um, I don't know where you got that, Michael, but I'm sure you can get it on Amazon or something like that. Best Buy. Yeah, so it's pretty easy. Best Buy. There you go. Yeah. Um, but don't hold yourself back, man. You don't have to spend a whole bunch of money to get on here and do a thing that God might be calling you to do. So if you if we can be helpful with that, you can email us at bromology at gmail. It's the content. You know, the content is the one that brings people in anyway. So That's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's what we're here to do. As we look back on the year, um, there was a couple things we wanted to highlight, just talk about. Maybe you're new here. So we'll give you kind of just a little taste of what we tried to do and what we're trying to accomplish on bromology. Again, the name bromology comes from the Greek word broma, which means food. Uh, so this is the food we believe that Jesus was telling Peter to go feed his sheep. So that's what our aim is to do. Um, and so we did a few different episodes. One, uh, we started with a Jude series. So Jude, for those that are new to Bible study, is the last book right before the book of Revelation. Uh, and there was a couple key things or broma pieces, I think, that came out of that study. One for me that stuck out, Michael, was that Jude is Jesus's brother. And the name Jude could also be Judas. So there's more than one Judas. There's the Judas Iscariot that was a backstabber. Uh, but then there was the brother of Jesus. Judas. Um, the other thing that stuck out to me was that Jesus was the one that freed Israel uh, from bondage, uh, which goes back to the book of Exodus. And again, if you're new to Bible study, Jesus wasn't supposed to be around yet. Uh, that was several thousand years before him. Uh, and yet the book of Jude tells us that Jesus, the second pers person of the Trinity, was the one that freed Israel from bondage. Uh, and the last thing that stuck out in that study to me, Michael, was this idea of common salvation, uh, which is a salvation that we share together as the body of Christ. Um, but in the context of Jude talking about the fallen angels, they were actually not given that common salvation or offered that common salvation, as we can see clearly in the book of Enoch. They asked for, you know, they tried to repent, if you will. Uh, and Enoch came back and said, talk to the father. He said, nope, it's a no go. Uh, and so that's why they hate you guys. You know, if there's ever, why do the demons hate us? What difference do, do we make? It's that they hate that you were given salvation, even though that we're just as sinful as they are. Uh, God found a way and made a way for us to be restored into relationship with him. So that's one of the, those are kind of three things that I took out of that Jude study. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I guess my favorite thing on the Jude study was the, like you said, the angels, they left their former abode. So we're promised this heaven, this, th but they left it. And so it kind of ties in, like they made a choice to actually leave quote unquote heaven, came down here, you know, did their thing. And now they're punished, like Dan said. But my favorite part of the Jude, part, the Jude <coughs> podcast was, um, it was like one of the very end. It was uh, when we were in the presence of his, of him, we'll have this amazing joy. And then I kind of tied it into when baby John saw Yeshua in the womb, they were both in the womb and he, he leaped for joy. And then when the Acts 2 church, you know, they're coming together, um, studying, breaking bread, and they have this amazing joy too. And it's just, for me, that was one of my best, better word studies that I, I have joy just doing this podcast with Dan times that by a billion. That's going to be how we're going to feel when, um, you know, we're in the presence of Yeshua. Um, another one that I loved too, 
you know, Dan's going to talk about his, his second one too. Um, I'm just going to go back to the first one, the introduction. I mean, that was such a big step for us. Um, we've been talking about doing something and we've just been spinning our wheels for years. And we finally just decided, hey, let's just do a short outline of what we want to say. We did a manja section, gave her it, it testimonies, and it just flew. And it it felt great to finally break this seal. And look, we have 13 episodes, and here we are doing a year in review on camera. I can't believe it. So back to you, brother. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. It really has been a joy, too, to do this thing with you. Um, you know, we go way back. Uh, Michael and I went to the same high school, at least for a year. Um, but then shortly after high school, we both worked for uh, a valet company in downtown Tampa. And my first night on the job, I hopped in. I don't even remember what kind of car it was, but Michael was driving. I'm in the passenger seat. And I was like, well, I'm, you're training me. Do you know what you're doing? And he goes, I don't know what I'm doing. It's only my second day here. Uh, but we figured it out. And that was one, that was a really, really awesome gig, especially at that age. But uh, anyways, um, another thing to me that stuck out for this last year was just our Freemason series. Uh, we were kind of hesitant to even do what we're calling fringe topics because we weren't sure how that would be received. So we weren't, we weren't sure if we wanted to stick to just normal biblical topics like the Sermon on the Mount uh, or expand outside of that. So we took a chance with the Freemasonry thing. We did an episode about uh, a brief testimony of me leaving Freemasonry. For those of you who don't know, um, I was a 32nd degree Freemason uh, and God called me out of that, but I learned a ton in it. Um, and a lot, a lot of what we saw in this Freemason uh, series so far, we've got two, Leaving Freemasonry, and then we covered the first degree of Freemasonry called the Entered Apprentice, um, is that it was our biggest viewership. So as we were hesitant to even do it, it ended up being what we got the most views for. Also, the biggest feedback, if you look at the comments, if we were to look at uh, emails that we got, that was by far the biggest response that we got out of any of the, the episodes we did. So um, we said, well, maybe God's calling us to do more fringe stuff. And, you know, we kind of prayed on this and why, and I think it just boils down to, it's an opportunity to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Um, I talked to one of the pastors I work with at a church uh, just this past week, and he's got somebody in his congregation that came from the church of Satan and uh, converted to Christianity. He's all in, uh, but now he wants to kind of join Freemasonry and was asking the church's opinion. And the pastor uh, sent him an apologetic of like, hey, don't do it. It's not not wise as a Christian, um, but would just sort of like Googled it. And this isn't a knock on him, but just found an apologetic that's available on the internet. The problem with that is, is it doesn't allow for one-on-one -on -one discipleship. Um, and so our hope by teaching these fringe topics is that we can equip the saints for the work of ministry. So whether you're a pastor uh, or a Christian that's got a neighbor uh, or a brother that's interested in that, you can speak intelligently and bring them back to the gospel. So add that to Michael. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe the response either with the Freemasonry, but we're going to con continue to do it. I don't know if we're going to go to 32, but we're, we're definitely going to do the second degree next and just see how it is. Like me and Dan talking on the side, and it's just amazing how we're presenting it. We're teaching, we're dissecting it, we're showing you. We're learning on the job too, guys. Dan has a lot of knowledge that he's equipped, but there's things we learn while studying it as well. And I think we're presenting it in a way that's going to draw people in. Um, my second, I guess, best video that I, I I did like that we did this year, but like Dan said, we're trying to do the fringe. Why? It's because, you know, we did the, the biblical series and those were, you know, one of our lowest views. And you're, you're going to go to Bible Project. You're going to go to other pastors out there when you're typing in these words like Beatitudes. You're not going to come nuts, right? So um, we have to we have to earn your trust, right? We have to earn that credibility. And so we, Dan and I, we shared our testimony. We're all conspiracies. That's what we, that's how we, that's how I came to faith was through truth. And so that's, what we're, that's who we're trying to reach. So my second favorite video was, um, I love the Pharisee video. And it's, you know, it's, it's because we all probably could have been Pharisees before. Um, I love uh, the foundational principle of just Father's law and Yeshua blocking it out perfectly. And then anything outside of that, anything added or taken away is somewhat pharisaical. And I just thought we did a good job with that video. Um, anything you want to add there, brother? No, man, I think that's awesome. And I think it's needed in the Western church. We think legalism, we think trying to keep God's commandments. And I think we, we think about scripture from Paul that says, if you're going to keep the law, you got to keep the whole law. Uh, but it's in the context of salvation. We are not teaching that keeping the law 
earns salvation. But what we are saying is it's an act of worship and it's important. And I don't think we're teaching it quite as clearly as we should be. Um, so we're trying to do that. Um, so instead of hating on other ministries, we're just going to try to be a ministry that does the thing we think is missing. So I think that's a, a, a huge point, dude. Um, we also wanted to spend, I don't know, a couple minutes just with a, our own little broma piece, right? Or manja, uh, you know, with us being Italian, if you can't tell, uh, we uh, like to eat a little bit, right? We want to eat ourselves. We eat this broma and then, you know, feed it to you. And hopefully it's a blessing to you. And what I believe that God uh, wants me to show you and wanted to show me is in the book of Job. So if you have your Bible, uh, open up to the book of Job. Uh, it's in the first chapter and it's verses eight through 10. Uh, and here's what it says. It says, and the Lord said to Satan, <clears throat> have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge of protection around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions and increased in the land. Uh, and what I want to point out is, is in the context of prayer, I almost always pray for a hedge of protection around people. And the reason that I do that is because Satan himself admits that he can't do anything to us as long as God has a hedge of protection around us, that God has to give the enemy permission to create havoc in our lives by pay, putting that hedge of protection down. Um, and I want to point to a few, we won't go through all of these on this particular uh, episode, but I just want to point the folks that are watching uh, to a few other scriptures that are helpful in prayer. Um, so that's Psalm 91 verses 1 through 16, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, so all of Psalm 23, all of Matthew 6, uh, Romans 8, 31 through 39. And then of course here in Job 1 verse 10. So, uh, that's my broma. My encouragement, uh, is to dive into what the Bible has to say about prayer, the power that you have behind it. And don't let us ever be a people that says, well, I, you know, all I can do is pray for them. It's not an, all you can do is pray for anybody. It's the most important and most powerful thing you can do in any situation. Amen, brother. Yeah. Real good stuff. Um, and if you've watched us, you could tell the differences between Dan and I. Dan is such a great speaker. He's a he's more of the preacher. He he can motivate you. I'm more of the researcher. I hope you enjoy this this broma here. Um, uh, I, I did a, a real deep study in Genesis. This, I'm just going to pick something from that. So this is Genesis 24, and it's kind of cool. So this is about when um, Rebecca, you know, uh, Rebecca was being picked um, uh, to be the to be the wife. Um, uh, of the master and he sends the master out and uh but there's if you research it there's a big disparity on the age of what she was i was doing research anywhere from three to like 14 and so you know if we're an apologetic we're supposed to defend this three come on guys she's talking i'm gonna read the i'm gonna read the passage she's talking she actually is grabbing water come on we can't be that dense guys come on three but um so I'm just going to read some of it and then kind of explain where I'm going with it. I think she's a little bit older than 14, and I'll give you kind of my my take on that. So Genesis 24, I'm not going to read the whole thing, starting on 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebecca came out with her pitcher upon her shoulder. The damsel was fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. She went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. The servant ran to meet her. I'm continuing, continuing. She gave him something to drink. Um she says, I will draw water for your camels also until they have done drinking. So she actually cares for the animals. That's an amazing thing. Continuing, continuing, number 22 says, and it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of 10 shekels weight of gold and said, whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge? The man bowed down, worshiped the Lord and said, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham who hath not destitute my master of his mercy. I am being in the way. The Lord let me to the house of my master's brother. And so Abraham was looking for a wife, Rebecca. Um, he sent his his, uh, his uh, servant. And this is one of the first ones where you meet a woman at the well. You know, there's, there's many different stories where the sons are meeting the woman at the well. Yeshua met a woman at the well as well, pun intended. All right, so now on the, the age part. So, that word of half a shekel. So when it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, and the man took a golden earring of a half shekel weight. That word of a half a shekel is only tw twice. The word is becca. 
Becca. I don't know if that's, you know, from Rebecca, but B-E-Q-A. It's only used twice here. And then in Exodus 38. So I'm going to read Exodus 38, kind of give you more context. All, t- starting in 24, all the gold that was used for the work and all the work of the sanctuary, which was the gold of the wave offering, was 29 talents, 730 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. And the sil- silver of those of the congregation who were counted was 100 talents and 1,775 shekels, according to the she- shekel of the sanctuary. A becca, a head, um, assessed to each one who passed over to those who were counted from 20 years old and upward for 603,550 men. So um, a becca, a becca was given to everyone who passed over, who crossed over 20 years and upward. Guys, Joshua and Caleb, they were the only ones entering the promised land. They were 20 and upward. There seems to be this age of accountability. And I'm wondering if Rebecca was 20 years or upward as she crossed over into the family of Abraham. You know, the Hebrews, they're, they're, they are known to be the ones who have crossed over into this, into covenant. Rebecca, Abeka was given to ones who were 20 years old and upward and crossed over. And that's my Brahma. What do you think about that? Wow, that's really good. Um, it reminds me there's something about like the disciples when we try to look at their age and paying a tax and we can kind of conclude that they were, I don't remember if it was it, 20 or... It, it was temple tax. Yeah, it was only Yeshua and Peter were the only ones who had to pay. So the theory is all the other ones were under 20. And it, there's wow. something with that 20. There's something with yeah, that it sounds that way. Yeah, and it also made me think, um, I had one of uh, a dear sister that I work with said yesterday, she's like, sometimes I don't know if I even realize what the Bible's saying. And what she's getting at is there's sometimes there's stuff like right in our face. And we we're like, how did I not see that before? So it reminds me of like Abraham and Isaac. We always think of Isaac as like a baby that he was going to sacrifice. Uh, was it Mount Moriah, I think? Um, but it says that Isaac was carrying his own stuff and asking questions. So uh, clearly not a baby, right? So there's some details there that show he's probably more like a teenager at least. Um, maybe, maybe that goes back to being 20 in the age of accountability too. But dude, that's sick. I love it. I love it. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this too. That's what we do here, man. Like he and I could sit literally the rest of the day, we could do this and just kind of talk about theology and get lost in it. So if you're like that, you like to go deep down the rabbit hole and get lost in the sauce and and that does something to bring you closer to God, um, then you'd fit right in here at at Bromology. Yeah. So those were our mantra sections. As Dan said, you know, we love to feed you. That's an Italian word for eat, eat. But uh, I just want to end it. You know, this is awesome. We're going to continue with this. We love doing this for you. We were joking beforehand. We didn't plan to wear all black guys. This is not our uniform. We did we did want to rep the merch, but yeah, we, we didn't plan. That's right. He's got yeah. the gold Italian chain. You know, I've got the black yeah. city. But uh we love you yeah. guys. And this is uh Michael and Dan from Bromology, the study of biblical food. We hope you enjoyed the year in review. <laughs>